Welcome to Laptop Powerwall, episode 30, 12 things I've learned. So I've just about finished the 2 kilowatt Powerwall. It's in, it's running, it's all good. I wanted to share some of the stuff that I've learned. First up, the Tesla fuses are fantastic. I can't recommend them highly enough. They have saved me a couple of times from my own stupidity. A couple of places I put in a cell upside down and when I soldered the fuse to connect it up, the fuse blew, and the fuse saved the cell and the rest of the pack from possible dire consequences. So Tesla fuses is fantastic. The other nice thing about Tesla fuses is they minimize the amount of heat required to solder a connection to the cell. That's a good feature as well. Two, discharging is still the slow part. I've been watching lots of videos and my own experience tells me that the discharging to measure the capacity is still the slow part of this whole do-it-yourself exercise. I've got a friend who's working on a, an Arduino-based multi-cell discharger capacity meter and I don't want to push him too much because he's just doing it off his own bat but I'm eagerly awaiting that and we'll see how that goes. Three. Laser cutting is very easy and really cool. I did the front panel with my very first laser cutting project and can't believe how well it worked. It's fantastic. If you get a chance to do something with laser cutting, give it a go. Four, it weighs a lot. So my two kilowatt pack is a single unit of seven groups in series with 48 cells per group. So it's what, 336 cells, I think all in one massive chunk and it weighs about 18 kilograms which is just manageable but is more than I really want to be lugging around. The odds of me dropping one at some point are high enough that I'm thinking next time I will either drop down to building multiple one kilowatt hour packs or I might go the way of Jehu Garcia and most other people and switch to doing discrete blocks for each parallel group and then connect those together. I want to keep using my strapping because that's super easy to solder to and it seems to me that the bus bar, heavy bus bars that uh, Peter and Jehu and other people are using is, uh, is still an awkward process. So I want to hang on to my strapping system We'll see how that goes. I'm still mulling over what to do there. Five, using pairs is still a good idea. I am still sold on the, the idea that keeping the cells that you pull out of a laptop in their pairs is a better way of doing things than stripping them down to the singles. If you can make your own battery holders. If you can get hold of a 3D printer, which I highly recommend, they're really cool or if you've got a friend who's got a 3D printer, or time to make a new friend who's got a 3D printer, the pairs scenario, I think, is the better way to go. Six, my 10-way eye charger that I use for charging in series, I balance charge 10 cells or pairs of cells at a time, works really well, but I'm going to try the TP4056 charger modules that a few other people have been recommending. I'm going to give that a test. Lesson seven that I've learned is my battery holders work really well. Yeah, I've actually tweaked the design a little bit more, so I'm up to version eight on my design now. I've made it slightly deeper so that it holds the battery more firmly, and I have added a slot so that I can slot in either one or two strapping lines and also hold it two millimeters off the battery so there's no chance of a short. And I will put that on the Thingiverse so you can download it if you want to. Lesson eight, the LED front panel was really cool. I happen to have those color changing LEDs and I happen to have the remnants of an old laptop diffuser to put between the, the front panel and the LEDs to give that cool diffuse look. And that worked out really well in combination with the laser cut um, lettering. Super cool. Lesson nine, breaker switches are good. It's probably self-explanatory, but Probably the thing that I like more now than previously is DIN rail mounted breaker switches. Previously I'd been using screw-in mounted 
slightly ugly breaker switches but now I'm using gin mounted breaker switches and they are quite nice and tidy. Um, I'm suddenly I'm becoming a fan of gin mounted products now. Listen 10. The BMS. So my BMS, I don't yet know if the balancing function is working because I only charge up to 4 volts per group in order to extend the life of the battery. I'm not going to the full 4.2. I don't know if my BMS does balancing at the 4 volt level or whether it requires the voltage to go up to 4.2 before it starts doing the balancing. I'm not actually sure what the best way of testing that is. If you have any ideas, let me know. Lesson 11. I made the mistake of using my thin fuse wire on both sides of the battery, which, uh, in hindsight, wasn't very smart. The fuse, if there's a problem, I might have the fuse at the back of the pack blow, and I'll never know because I don't look at the back of the pack. I've got perspex on the front of the pack, so it's easy to do a visual inspection. But um, what I should have done, is, this is what Peter at HB Powerwall does, is use thicker wire on the back and the thin fuse wire only on the front. That's what I'm going to do next to my next packs. And I probably should go in and change all the fuses on the back of my current 2 kilowatt pack. Lesson 12, battery holder clips interfere with my fans. So I've got these little hook clips that clip my battery holders together and the way I originally designed them, the battery sits on top of the fans and some of those gouge down and interfere with the actual fan blades. So I printed some fan spaces to hold the battery away from the fan blades. So that's all good now. And that's 12 lessons I've learned. There you have it. Thanks for listening and watching. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.